Welcome to St. Andrew's Anglican Church. Uh, today is the first Sunday after Epiphany, but more importantly, it is the celebration of the feast and the remembrance of the baptism of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Jordan River. Uh, there'll be a few differences in today's service. Uh, first of all, um, immediately following, and in your bulletin, you'll see that immediately following the sermon, I'm going to ask you to open up your prayer books to a specific page. I believe it's page 657, and we're going to pray Colic 39 together, which is for our nation. And our, our nation is, is in need of prayer. You'll also notice that in our prayers of the people today, there's some significant changes, one of which is we're not going to ask for your petitions, but we will be adding uh, not only the prayer for our president, but for our president-elect. So uh, just so you know that we're walking together as one country, and uh, so we'll be walking together in prayer for our country. I wanted you to know that. Um, we begin or resume our Wednesday night uh, studies on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock, this Wednesday, January 13th, in the parish hall. Uh, our next vestry meeting is Monday, January 18th at 6.30 p.m. in the parish hall, in which we'll be making preparations for the annual meeting uh, scheduled for Sunday, January 24th. And uh, there's uh, some notes here uh, regarding your giving, and we thank you for that. Uh, our birthdays, Andrew Tanner is celebrating a birthday this week, and Catherine Evans is celebrating a birthday this week as well. Uh, an anniversary, Shelley and Russell Yeomans celebrating an anniversary this week. Uh, I'd ask you now to please stand and open your red hymnals to hymn 76 on Jordan's Bank, the Baptist Cry. begin today's service with our acclamation, I will make you as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. Please join me, if you would, turning to page 124 in the prayer book as we pray together, kneeling if you're able, the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ says. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. 
The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated now for the lessons. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. In faithfulness he will bring forth justice. He will not falter or be discouraged Till he establishes justice on earth. In his law, the islands will put their hope. This is what God the Lord says, he who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and all that comes out of it, who gives breath to its people and life to those who walk on it. I, Lord, have called you in righteousness. I will take hold of your hand. I will keep you and will make you to be a covenant for the people and light for the Gentiles, to open eyes that are blind, to free captives from prison, and to release from the dungeon those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to another or praise to idols. See, the former things have taken place, and new things I declare. Before they spring into being, I announce them to be you, the word of the Lord. Pre-join me with Psalm 89, prayed responsibly by half verse. I have found David my servant. My hands shall hold him fast. The enemy shall not be able to do him violence. I will smite his foes before his I will smite his foes before his face. My faithfulness and my mercy shall be with him. I will give him dominion over the sea. He shall say to me, you are my father. And I will make him my firstborn. My mercy will I keep for him forever. 
His seed will I make to endure forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts men from every nation who fear him and do what is right. You know the message of God sent to the people of Israel, telling the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what has happened throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism, baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Mark. Glory to you, the Lord Christ. And this is John's message. After me will come one more powerful than I, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. As Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and a spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. I believe that today's Holy Gospel helps us to better understand what took place in the Jordan River, when Jesus stepped up to be baptized by John the Baptist. All four of the Gospels have accounts of this absolutely amazing event. And here we see the Savior of the world submitting himself to be cleansed and baptized, receiving a spiritual acknowledgement and, if you will, inauguration by both, the God, the, by both God the Father and the Holy Spirit. If you remember, during Advent, we read about Jesus' mother Mary visiting her older cousin, Elizabeth, near Jerusalem. Elizabeth was pregnant with John, who leapt in his mother's womb 
at the presence of the unborn Jesus in Mary's womb. John's father, Zechariah, is a priest in the temple in Jerusalem. And listen to these words from Luke 1, 8 to 13. Once when Zechariah's division was on duty and he was serving as priest before God, he was chosen by lot, according to the custom of the priesthood, to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And when the time for burning of the incense came, all the assembled worshipers were praying outside. Then an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was startled and he was gripped with fear. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you are to give him the name John. It was when the angel Gabriel visited Zechariah that Zechariah questioned the words that he'd been told. And so he was caused to become silent until the Lord lifted that silence when John was named during his circumcision. I think it's especially important for us to understand Zechariah, in his role as a priest of the temple, gets to lay the sins of the Jewish world upon the scapegoat on the Day of Atonement, which we call Yom Kippur, and then sends the goat out into the wilderness until its death. I believe that God was doing something very much more than just a baptism during the baptism of Jesus. John the Baptist, in his Levitical line of priests, lays hands on the Messiah, and he takes on the sins of the whole world and is then sent out into the world, into the wilderness. I think God made this a day of atonement for the whole world. Jesus gave his endorsement to John the Baptist's ministry, and God the Father gives his endorsement as well with the words during the baptism. It was John who said this about Jesus. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. This absolutely wonderful, marvelous event appears in all four Gospels, in Mark 1, 1 to 11, Matthew 3, 13 to 17, Luke 3, 1 to 22, and John 1, 31 to 34. It's so important. It marks the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry, as Jesus would then go from the Jordan, across from Jericho, and go into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights where he would be tempted by Satan. And you might ask the question, well, why was Jesus baptized? Well, first, Jesus was fulfilling all righteousness, being consecrated to God the Father, and then being approved by him. All of God's righteousness requirements for the Messiah were fulfilled by Jesus. A second, this was a public announcement by John the Baptist of the arrival of the Messiah, the long-awaited Messiah that he'd been preaching about. And then Jesus' baptism allowed him to fully identify with mankind's sinfulness and failure, even though Jesus had no sin himself. And so he carried our sins, not as a sinner, but he became our substitute, if you will, like a scapegoat. But there's so much more happening during the baptism, and we're given an indication of the presence of the Holy Trinity, present right before mankind for the very first time. Jesus is baptized, and he arises from the Jordan. The voice of God the Father is heard saying, You are my Son, whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. Well, I would venture to say that most sons are grateful to hear their father say, Son, I'm proud of you. At the same time, the heavens opened and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. What an amazing spectacle. Here in the Jordan River was a view of God's amazing power. As the Gospel of Mark says, as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove, and a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, whom I love with you. I am well pleased. 
at this place across from Jericho in the Jordan River, John saw heaven being torn open, something only God himself could do to draw attention to all that was about to happen. All four Gospels describe the Holy Spirit descending upon Jesus as a dove to give him the strength to fall upon him, both God and man, to go about his earthly ministry, carrying the sins of mankind and giving him strength to carry out the mission for which he became man in the first place. The humanity of Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit so that he would be able to face Satan head on in the wilderness and resist the temptations that the devil was going to throw at him. After that, Jesus would return to the place of his growing up, to Nazareth, and he would proclaim in the synagogue the words that we heard from Isaiah 61 that George read this morning. The Spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. As I said, they've been foretold in Isaiah 600 years before Jesus was born and were being fulfilled right there in the life of Jesus. The baptism of Jesus was just the beginning of three amazing years in which Jesus would show the world God's love for his people in word and in deed, ultimately coming to the greatest demonstration of his love for us by willingly climbing that mountain and lying on the cross to be nailed and lifted, humiliated, and forgiving his murderers before he breathed his last breath. That day, in the Jordan River, God the Father spoke in the presence of the Son and the Holy Spirit, revealing Jesus is the only Son of God. You are my Son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. A similar words were again spoken by God the Father in Luke 9.35 and Matthew 7.15 when Jesus appeared on the mountain in the Galilee. The transfiguration, we call it. In coming weeks, we will, and actually it's February 14th, we will have that gospel and celebrate the feast of the transfiguration. Moses and Elijah, Moses being the law, a symbol of the law, and Elijah, a symbol of the prophet, standing on either side of a glowing Jesus, revealing his true glorious nature. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped him, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. And God asked, added the words, listen to him. God's never tried to hide his Messiah from his people. He's spoken about him from the beginning of time and even more pointedly told the world who he is at the baptism in the Jordan and at the transfiguration. God wants the world to accept Jesus and believe in him so that the entire world can be saved. In the Gospel of John, a gentleman who was a leader of the temple came to visit Jesus at night for fear of being discovered by the other Jewish leaders. His name, Nicodemus. He asked Jesus about being born again. And Jesus told him, quite plainly, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. As Jesus said, those who accept and believe in him will be saved. Remember, Jesus received all the sins of mankind that day in the Jordan from the son of a priest, and he would go on to carry them to the cross, defeating sin and death once and for all, so that we can, in essence, be washed free from our sins like the waters of the Jordan on our souls. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, I'd ask you to open your prayer books and kneeling if you're able.
Open them, if you would, to page 657. And at the bottom of that page, you'll see Colic 39, a prayer for our nation. Now, I'm not going to just pray this. I'm going to ask you to pray it with me. Indeed, we need to be praying for our country. Together, Almighty God, who has given us this good land for our heritage, we humbly beseech thee that we may always prove ourselves a people mindful of thy favor and glad to do thy will. Bless our land with honorable industry, sound learning, and pure conduct. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil way. Defend our liberties and fashion into one united people from the multitudes brought hither out of many kindreds and tongues, and do with the spirit of wisdom those to whom in thy name we entrust the authority of government, that there may be justice and peace at home, and that through obedience to thy law we may show forth thy praise among the earth, nations of the earth. In the time of prosperity, fill our hearts with thankfulness, and in the day of trouble, suffer not our trust to thee to fail, all of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now if you would turn standing to page 127 in your prayer books so that we may confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom is not now end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I ask you now to please turn to page 128, and kneeling if you're able, let us pray the prayers of the people. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for oral saying, hear our prayer for the peace of the whole world, and for the well-being and unity of the people of God. Lord, in your mercy, for Foley, our Archbishop, Neil, our Bishop, for all the clergy and people of our diocese and congregation. Lord, in your mercy, for all those who proclaim the gospel at home and abroad, and for all who teach and disciple others. Lord, in your mercy, for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy. For our nation, for those in authority, and for all in public service, especially Donald, our president, and Joseph, our president-elect. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, Today, we especially pray for Jake, Stone, 
Meg, Elizabeth, Addison, Leela, John, Tamara, Kim, Denny, Candom, David, Jackson, Ralph, Corky, Ashley, Deacon Diane, Doris, Jennifer, Henry, Jim, Suzanne, Doug, Linda, Kevin, Jacqueline, Tim, Jackie, Rhonda, Ken, Benita, Sherry, Claude, Cameron, Jacqueline, Christian, Cheryl, Maxie, Bishop Neal, and all who protect our freedom at home and abroad. Boyd, we especially lift up uh, at this time a dear friend of this parish. As a matter of fact, he celebrated the very first Christmas service here at St. Andrew's Anglican Church, and that is canon to the ordinary of our diocese, uh, canon Jim McCaslin. He and his wife, Ginny, are suffering from COVID. Uh, Ginny has been intubated and is being sedated uh, and is serious at this time. Um, Jim thanks us for, your, uh, for all of your prayers and we, Lord, we continue to lift them up for complete and total healing. Lord, we continue to lift up all medical staff, first responders, and all those people who are dealing with this COVID-19 virus. Grant wisdom among all your people that we would proceed wisely and safely and be caring for one another. We especially pray that you, Lord, will use all these as a way to turn many to yourself as you use all things for good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For all those who have departed this life in a certain hope of the resurrection and thanksgiving, let us pray. Lord, uh, we thank you for the life of Bobby Hooper, who went into your arms Sunday afternoon, last Sunday afternoon. Uh, we especially pray for uh, Eric and Jennifer, Elizabeth and Carolyn, and the rest of the Hooper family, Lord, uh, and the Lot family. We just... Uh, Thank you for his life and the, the impact that he had on so many people and his love for you, especially. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, grant these our prayers for the sake of Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I ask you now to turn to page 130 in your prayer book and let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Together, let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent for the sake of Jesus. Have mercy and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and all in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, our, mer our Heavenly Father, who in his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all those who sincerely repent and with true faith turn to him, have mercy upon you pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Jesus said, come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. And the Apostle Paul wrote to Timothy, the saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sins, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. He is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us share with one another a sign of Christ's peace.
Please be seated. Yeah, I, I had the privilege last Sunday afternoon while we were doing in between people coming in for communion on the porch of calling Eric Hooper and asking him how his daddy was doing. And uh, he said that the, the Roman Catholic priest had just been there uh, and he was, had been at the hospital and that his, uh, his father was given the sacrament of the sick, which is known as last rites. And uh, just the faith that Eric had in his voice was so wonderful. And he said, uh, it's gonna be any time now. And within about 15 minutes after that, uh, Bobby did enter the loving arms of Jesus. And, and that, that's why we're here, folks, because we know it's true that Jesus loves us, was baptized, taking on all the sins so that we could be with him. John 3.16 isn't just a fable, folks. It's absolutely true. If you believe in Jesus, it's that easy. And how many of us know how to say, I'm sorry? If you know how to say, I'm sorry, that's repenting and asking to be able to turn away from what you did. I was telling somebody in our parish this week, with all the stuff that's going on in the country, we need to remember four words. God is in control. Let's remember those words. And remember, that's why we're here, to serve him, to love him, and one day to return to him. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
now turning to page 132 of the prayer book. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right, our duty and our joy always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who took on our mortal flesh to reveal his glory, that he might bring us out of darkness and into his own glorious light. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had sinned against you and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent your only Son into the world for our salvation. By the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, he became flesh and dwelt among us. In obedience to your will, he stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself once for all that by his suffering and death, we might be saved. By his resurrection, he broke the bonds of death, trampling hell and Satan under his feet. As our great high priest, he ascended to your right hand in glory, that we might come with confidence before the throne of grace. On the night that he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, Jesus took the cup when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is the blood, my blood, of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father. In this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your word and Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Sanctify us also that we may worthily receive this holy sacrament and be made one body with him so that he may dwell in us and we in him and bring us with all your saints into the fullness of your heavenly kingdom where we shall see our Lord face to face. All this we ask for your son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Now turn to page 135 in your prayer book. Let us pray together the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your abundant and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose character is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy. the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now before anyone receives Holy Communion today, uh, I would ask that we turn to page 677 in the Book of Common Prayer and let us pray together for spiritual communion. Dear Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to possess you within my soul. And since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. I unite myself to you, together with all your faithful people, gathered around every altar of your church, and I embrace you with all the affections of my soul. Never permit me to be separated from you.
And now turning to page 137 of the prayer book, let us gratefully pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for feeding us with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and for assuring us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do, to love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, in honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you today and always. Remembering those four words, let's keep God or remember that God is in control. Turning now to hymn 525, let us sing the first three verses of the church's one foundation is Jesus Christ, her Lord. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 